All right, let's talk Julio Jones because this is a real topic. Uh, I kind of ignored it for a while, but the Niners are the odds-on favorite to land him. Let's be real clear. Let me set, set this up. The Falcons are probably going to trade Julio Jones after June 1. Um, they're probably going to trade him after June 1. That's in 10 days. 10 days. So it's coming up, and the Niners are the odds-on favorite to get him. Kyle coached him already. Joe Staley went on Twitter to campaign for it. I mean, he, yeah. he, he was like, hey, the Niners should get him. Kyle knows how to get it. Thanks, Joe. So was that, uh, this, is, this has legs. This could happen. First of all, should it happen? And then part we'll come to part uh, part two of the question. Will it happen? Because those are always two different things. Yeah, it sure seems like every key player, especially wide receiver over the past four years that is even close to hitting the market is linked to the 49ers. So I, I don't fault you for sort of brushing it off at first because it mm -hmm. did seem like that's what this was when it yeah. first got traction. Now I agree with you. I, th I think that the story has legs. The, the Joe Staley tweet was hilarious. I mean, yes. an awkward way of sort of putting pressure on the, the the organization. It was, you know, funny and and you could laugh it off. But I think it gave some 49ers fans hope, right? I mean, this is Joe Staley we're talking about. If Joe thinks it's a possibility, it's a possibility. Right. So I think to answer your 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 question, uh, first and foremost, I would. I would, I would try and make it happen. I think regardless of injury history, uh, production is still there when he's healthy. I think that having a receiver like that out on the edge would change the offense for the 49ers. I don't think that you can really argue that point. You can certainly make a great case for will he be healthy enough? You can make a great case for is it the best use of, of, of dollars within the organization? But as far as production value on the field when healthy. I just don't think you can dispute it. The man's a monster. Yeah. I mean, if they trade for Julio Jones, you couldn't call it a bad move. He's, he's a hall of fame wide receiver. Who's 32. He's signed through 2023. The thing is he's extreme. Hold on. So like, I like your enthusiasm. And if the Niners were to trade for Julio Jones, Niners fans would throw a parade. They'd be so oh, yeah. happy. And it, you couldn't call it a bad move. He's a hall of fame player, but I have concerns. Let me list them. All right. First of Please. all, first of all, he's really expensive. Um, yes. Not in terms of the draft capital. Three million for this year. Oh man, I'm looking at over the cap, and I'm seeing that his cap number this year is. Now it would be different for the Niners, but for Atlanta, it's twenty three million. For the Niners, it would be. 15.3. It would be fifteen. Yeah, they have to eat seven point five million even after that June. Cut. Yes. But still, I mean, he's expensive and he gets more expensive and then Armstead's expensive down the line and Kittle and, and Trent Williams and uh, it's and then Fred Warner. It seems like there's a lot of I don't know if they can even do it financially, but say they could. What about the fact that he's 32 and missed seven games last year and has played a lot of physical football? And What does he have left? Is he going to be I mean, if he, if you have him and Kittle and Debo and Ayuk. That's like the best collection of skilled position players when they're on the field together. But how often are they on the field together? I mean, Debo has issues. Kittle has issues. People forget Ayuk tore core muscle in college. He had uh, ankle in injuries and hamstring injuries last year as a rookie. He can't just bank on him playing a whole season. And now Julio, at a certain point, um, I don't know. But I mean, go all in with – forget durability. Oh, well. It's a fair question. But I do think that that is – a strategy point that you have to answer, right? When when you want physical freaks, when you want people like George Kittle who play like a WWE star, mm -hmm. you're going to miss a couple of games every year. That that That's to cool. me is is what the trade off is, and I will take that. I will take George Kittle being able to shed yeah. six block six tacklers in the Saints game for a couple of games each year that he's going to miss because someone hyperextends his knee when they go low on him. That's to fair. me, I got more concerns though. This is a run yeah. first team. This is a team that's really ideally throwing 25, 30 passes a game tops. So how do you split up those? Are there enough targets to go around for Julio Jones, Brandon Ayuk, Debo, and Kittle? Uh, you know, it's, and, and use check. I mean, it seems like, are you going to use them enough to justify it? And then the final thing, I guess there's four things that concern me about it, is they just traded away three years of first-round draft picks. Now you're going to trade a second. You're going to trade – are you going to trade it all for a guy who's in his 30s? You know, um, so there's four things to at least think twice about. But again, Hall of Fame player definitely makes your team better. 
it's not a bad move. It's just like a cost benefit analysis type of deal. It is. And I think clearly, even if this would get the, the deal done, you're, you're going to have to give up the second next year. You're probably going to have to throw in a third the year after. We do have the extra third from uh, the, the uh, uh, Martin Mayhew and Sala signings. And so I think that when you look at draft capital, I, I get what you're saying there. You do need to be able to restock cheap talent. And that's the NFL's model now that you have the rookie wage scale in there. You can clearly, um, in those early rounds, get valuable starters. I do think when you look at this team, it, it really is deep. And it's deep depending upon injury. I get that. We do have a lot of players who, you know, if, if they go down, we could be in some trouble. But I think that's true across the league. And I do believe the 49ers roster is set up at the point where we're at that cusp of being able yeah. to push for the Super Bowl. So I think you bring on Julio Jones and you just hope that you click at the right time at the end of the year and that you're healthy then. And players like Kittle, Ayuk, Debo, and Julio Jones are on the field for a playoff run. And now who's going to stop that offense? All right. Now let's do the second part of the, of the question. Will they trade for Julio Jones? In your opinion, I, I don't think so. I, I think maybe I'm a little bit jaded in this regard in that I, I've just seen so many of these uh, possible trades come across the, the, the wire and very few of them have actually happened. Right. I mean, we've gotten a couple of great trades. I, I really was fond of and continue to be fond of the Jimmy G trade. But as far as wide receivers go, I, I just don't think that we have pulled the trigger there. I know what Kyle said about there's you know only so many Julios on the planet and, and you, you go and you get them. The production is there for me. I look back and did the averages, you know, 10 seasons. He averages 13 and a half games a season. And that's taking into account the, the nine games he missed last year. He averages 84, 85 catches a year, averages 1300 yards receiving a year, averages six touchdowns a year, kind of a, a low figure there. So he may not be the red zone threat that we need, um, but has a catch rate of 64%. I, I just, I think if you can fit him, you, you try. To me, the, the money is the biggest thing. I looked across, we, we have 11 million of cap space. He's mm -hmm. 15.3. Mm -hmm. I looked at what deals, who can you extend? Where can you get the money from? And unless you add a couple of years to Jimmy Ward's deal or Eric Armstead, or do something with Jimmy, which seems highly unlikely. I don't know where they find the cap dollars to do it this year. See, that's interesting. I actually think I see this differently than you in, in both ways. I, I think I'm more against it than you. I'm more mm. cautious on this. But then in terms of predicting it, I think it, it's actually more likely than you do. And the reason I think it's more likely is Kyle coached him. Kyle knows him. Kyle has a relationship with him, and Kyle is constantly bringing players in that he knows. Uh, you think like it's not a big deal, but giving a guy a lot of money, you got to work with them. Sometimes it's these coaches don't want to work with someone. They, it's, it's, un, it's an unknown. But with Julio, you know you can work with him. He'll take your style. Kyle is a notoriously negative, abrasive coach with, uh, with players. I mean, yeah. he keeps it real. Uh -huh. uh, ask Dante Pettis about that. Yeah, some people can't take that. Julio nope. can. So I'm saying the fact that it probably won't cost a first round pick. There's mm -hmm. a relationship there. Julio would be into it. Kyle would probably be into it. He's been on record saying anytime someone like Julio Jones is available, you trade for him. Well, I can't think of anyone who's more like Julio Jones than Julio Jones. So um, I think that this is something that Kyle would definitely do, even if it's not necessarily, in my opinion, the most prudent. It's not prudent. It's not prudent, but he's still great. So it's not a bad move either. It's just not what you call but screw prudence. I don't think he's a very prudent person anyway. Wait, hey, Kyle. if you believe that, that trading for can, D Ford wasn't prudent, I mean, who cares? No. If you believe you can make a run at the Super Bowl, throw prudence out the window, get it done. Like one Super Bowl erases all the doubts. I don't care if you then disappear into obscurity. Look at the Seahawks organization, right? One Super Bowl win and then a Super Bowl loss. They are constantly in it each year, yes, but they are now in that conversation on the national spotlight of a phenomenal franchise. That yeah. one Super Bowl win elevates a franchise back into the limelight. So I say go for it. I'm gonna I say that I think they're gonna do it. I think in two weeks they're gonna get Julio Jones because Kyle wants him. And I think something else. If it's true that Kyle's second choice was Trey Lance, 
and he had to acquiesce. He wanted Mac Jones, but the fans revolted and the and the and the front office <laughs> overruled him. Then he could say, you know what? My turn. I want Julio Jones. Yeah. Put him on the team. I mean, if they traded for Emmanuel Sanders, they just might trade for Julio Jones. I think I think it's there's a reason that they're uh the odds on favorite and that Joe Staley opened his mouth on Twitter. I think it has a real possibility of happening. And I can see the Niners being Kyle being as motivated as anyone in the league to get this guy. I, the, the point you bring up about Kyle's guy is a big one that I hadn't considered as far as the likelihood of it getting all done. Of them, man. Pierre Pierre Garçon. Oh my <sighs> goodness. I mean, Brian Hoyer, like you just, you name them. It doesn't matter if they're super Alfred, talented. Morris, they're great Tevin, guys. He Coleman. Wants yeah. Just, he tried to get Austin Hooper last year. I mean, yeah. Alex Mack, it's just nonstop. Oh, I know you. I, I You know my offense. I know how you work. Okay, great. Well, Julio, only question is what number is he going to wear, man? What number is he going to wear? <laughs> he can't wear 11. He can buy it off Brandon Ayuk. But Ayuk's got – maybe he can wear number one. Julio's got some got some coin. I think he, he might be able to afford that number. Anyway, uh, we'll see. I will accept Kyle's stubbornness for Julio over Mac Jones.